Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Today is March the 4th. Welcome to March, everybody. Today we're working on week number three of the Hummingbird Quilt. I'm going to give it a minute to let everybody get notified and come on in if they want to join us live. Hello, everybody who's here. I see Dari's husband is watching with Dari on the TV. Hello, husband. Hello, everybody. A uh, huge thank you to my moderators today. Thank you all for keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, some news on the screen. We're doing this year a mug rug of the month. So you see the date and the time. That's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's one of the lives that we do in the evenings. I'm going to show you that mug rug here in a second. Mug rug of the month, Tuesday the 22nd. I kind of pushed it back to a little bit of a later date in this month because <laughs> I'm still working on my four commissions, although... They are coming together quite nicely, and uh, I imagine next week, early week, I'll be quilting them and throwing a binding on them and being done. But I didn't want to, like, overwhelm that, so I did push the mug rug back a little bit further in this month. Hello, everybody. Y'all come on in. Let me refresh this chat because I don't think it's doing anything. There we go. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. It's so great to see y'all. It is so great to see everybody. Hello. Okay, so uh, the mug rug of the month. Y'all remember, was it last week? The week before, might have been the week before. I was talking about I had designed March's mug rug of the month, and it was extremely uh, difficult. <laughs> well, uh, I just put that one aside. And I came up with this one, and it's super cute. Thank you, Denise. Uh, it's super cute. So I'm going to show it to you. And what I did, uh, I was having a hard time naming it. So I went over to my Patreon members, and I let them suggest a bunch of names. And I put all of their names in a cup and drew the winner. And it was Tammy. So Tammy got to name this mug rug. And uh, it's going to be super fun to make. Let me show you the mug rug. It's called Train Tracks. Thank you, Tammy, for the name. It is a weaved raw edge ragged mug rug. Super fun, super easy. Uh, I put this one through the wash one time, so the little edges have started to rag a little bit. It's super shabby and super cute. I love it. This is what we're making. Uh, and I did go ahead and put the PDF down in the description box if you want to grab it. It's not going to give you instructions. It's just going to tell you what you need if you want to make this with me live on the 22nd. Okay? So you can grab that. That's down in the box. I have not done the jewelry bag yet. No, I haven't. And, uh, I've been patiently waiting. <laughs> to do that. I just seem like I'm focusing all of my uh, energies on these four commissions. And uh, maybe after this weekend, after I get these tops together at least, I'll have a little bit more free time to do that. It's right there. I can see it. And it's just patiently like calling my name, waiting. Hello, everybody. So grab that. Uh, and I'll be putting the thumbnail for this live up closer to the 22nd. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Train tracks. I thought that was a cute name for that mug rug. Super cute. Today, uh, if you've already opened up the PDF for week three, and if you are making this quilt the same method that I'm using, only doing the whole completed parts, uh, and not doing the parts that uh, are cut off, then you already know that this week is going to be a kind of a light week. Uh, here's my colored example, but what I really meant to do, and I just skipped past it, I'm going to go back, is to put the numbers that I'm using in today's video. I forgot to do that. <laughs> so let me slow down a second. Let me put that on the screen. The blue numbers. So you see that seam running down in the picture, right? Uh, 
To the left of that seam was the cutoff pieces from week number two. And then you have week number three. I taped those two pages together and you'll see that here in a second. And then I numbered those. So all the numbers that are blue is what we're doing today. You'll notice there's no numbers in the wings because the bottom of the wings go into week number six. So I'm waiting on the wings. I'm waiting. I'm going to leave this up on the screen for a minute. If you want to copy down the same numbers that I'm using so that you can come back later and uh, follow along in the placement. Many of you get it by now, right? Week number three, we've got this pretty much down packed, but I thought I would share the numbers that I'm using. Hello, everybody. So great to see you. Nope, you have not missed the reveal of what's in that bag. I'm going to tell you, uh, a couple weekends ago, Harlan put up a shelf. You don't see it. The camera is actually sitting on the shelf, and it is awesome. And uh, so it's sitting on the shelf, and I can see it. But when I'm doing sublimation work, I'm on the other side of the shelf, and the bag is right there. And I just stare at it to see what I can discover, just that's on the outside while I'm heat pressing. <laughs> It's so tempting, but I haven't opened it yet. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> I just want to thank my moderators today. Thank y'all so much. All right, so there are the numbers, and if you miss them, you can always come back to uh, the replay, do a little screenshot maybe. Um, but yep, so those numbers, we have uh, 12 pieces we're going to put down today. Hazel said, it's about time you open it and not keep us in the dark. <laughs> I know, Hazel. I've had a week. Let me just tell you. I have had such a week. It should start to slow down and ease up a little bit. Middle of next week, I think. So... That's something to look forward to. All right, let me take this off the screen, and now we'll go back. <laughs> so y'all know we're working in uh, week number three, so we are working up in this top right, uh, yeah, top right hand corner, right in this red box. It does extend into the cutoff parts of week number two, right? I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of glad that the wings are cut off down into week number six. Because I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do those yet. If I'm going to do it as one whole big piece. Or if I'm going to break that up. If you've looked at the pattern for week number three. And you've taped it together to week number two. You kind of see that there's an opportunity to either do the wing as a whole piece. Or maybe complete this line right there. And make different uh, pieces, right? So I haven't quite decided how I'm going to tackle that yet. This is actually the mirror image. <laughs> Let me move that out of the way. Here you go. Here's the right side image. You see my three weeks are taped together. This is going to be the actual size of our quilt, y'all. 20 inches wide, 20 inches tall. Yep, I can't decide if I want to just draw a line and connect that and make this a separate piece. Or if I want to make it one whole solid wing shape. I'm not yet decided. I'm not yet decided. So I have all of my pieces already pre-cut. They're in my little bowl here. Um, I'm going to move this off to the side. This week I'm using my little tiny iron because it takes up less space. But it does take... A good little hot minute for it to <laughs> heat up. I'm going to set that on four. And it's going to have to sit there for a minute and heat up. We'll let that do its thing while we're just sitting here for a second. Stacy said separate it. I might just do that, Stacy. I'm going to just draw a little line right here just to see what that would look like. I might just do that. 
But here's the cool thing, y'all. There are so many possibilities on the ways. If you wanted to do this wing as one whole piece, you could come in with some Derwent ink tints, pencils or blocks or paints. You could come in with some fabric paint. You could come in with some fabric markers and maybe add a lot of these details on your fabric as your wing. So even though if you did the wing as one whole piece, you could really add a lot of details to make it look like several pieces. That sounds fun, right? Or you could just draw a line right there and do this one uh, a shade of uh, I'm using, actually I haven't decided what color I'm using yet. One shade of fabric and another shade of fabric. There's so many different possibilities. And let me just tell you, I've started seeing hummingbird pictures over on the Creative Crew. I love them. So uh, if you're working on this quilt, we would love to see your progress if you want to share pictures. Hazel, I've had this one for several years now. Uh, it's the Dritz Little Mini Iron. She's an old, oldie but goodie. She's a little dirty too. I don't know if you see that. <laughs> uh, she's an oldie but goodie. You can still get these. Uh, Joanne Fabrics has them. Michaels might have them. Hobby Lobby probably has them. Not sure about Walmart. You might give it a check. Uh, but I know for certain you can find it on Amazon. I love it for a little small detailed work. I also love it for turned edge applique uh, because it's easier to work around than the big iron, right? Uh, hello, Robin. Robin said, if you do two pieces, you can layer the wing, the small ruffled feather section, then the long big section. I know, I don't know what I'm going to decide to do. That's why I'm kind of glad that the wings were cut off because it's going to give me a minute to think about it. Today we're going to be filling in the sky area, and then it's going to go up on my board, and I have a good, uh, a good couple, let's see, one, two more weeks to think about it as the quilt progresses before I have to make a commitment and decide. <laughs> All right, so let me move this off to the side for a second, because I have to get situated. We're going to move my dirty pressing board over. Y'all don't look at that. <laughs> I need to go ahead and replace this cover and give this one a good wash. I'm gonna bring over uh, my quilt top. Now y'all, I've already drawn in the lines to save some time today. Uh, so I've already put the right side image up underneath of my quilt top and traced on my pieces. Y'all get it, this is week three, right? So there's my pieces, or the location of where they're going. And here's my little bowl of pieces. There we go. And it does take a good little minute for this to warm up. <laughs> I should have had it on this whole time. Dari said, I will be using my scan and cut, so I will cut mine as one piece and add the fabric markers to embellish my, ooh. Let me just tell you. Okay, so uh, at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival, Tidewater Sewing Vac had a great big booth. Ooh, they had some awesome machines, like multi-needle embroidery machines. Like, I really need to <laughs> get into that, but... That was interesting. They also had the newest, latest, and greatest scan and cut. And I had a good long conversation. I'm like, please show me why I should upgrade my machine. Because I have a version from five years ago, right? I have the scan and cut CM350. They don't even make that one anymore. But let me just tell you, it is still working top notch like I just bought her yesterday. And I'm like, why would I replace this machine? Because it is working perfectly. It does everything I need it to do. And then she showed me the newest and greatest. And wow, it was so quiet. I was like, wow, that is quiet. 
Uh, and it also has the rotary blade for fabric cutting. That was interesting. So if I upgrade anything this year, well, besides my software for my long arm, which I've already done, if I upgrade anything, it'll probably be my scan and cut, but I'm having a hard time justifying that because I love my CM350. And let me just tell you, Dari, I think it just beeped. It did. Uh, I took week number two's right side up images and I put it on my scanning mat and I scanned it and I was able to separate the pieces and it would have cut them all out perfectly. So you can definitely use your, your uh, scan and cut. Thank you, Robin. I'm going to tell you, I almost started to redo this. I bought some gorgeous fabrics at the quilt show that, that back the, the sky area. Oh, when I bought these fabrics, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to restart this and use the fabrics. And I think we were zooming on Creative Crew. Anyway, they were like, no, don't do that. Don't restart it. So now I want to make two. Oh, Kathy said you'll buy my old one if I do. All right, Kathy, let me know. Uh, it'll be some time. Uh, another reason to justify switching out the machines is the cost of the new one. Like this one's already paid for and it works perfectly. And the new one is like 700 and something. And I'm like, really? That, oh, uh, I don't know. But if I do anything this year, as far as upgrading my equipment, it'll be to get the newer version of the scan and cut. All right, she is warmed up. We're gonna start pressing these. Let's see, where's my little fabric map? Here we go. I'm gonna have to fold it just so I can fit it on the table here. <laughs> All right, the white sort of washes out the camera and makes it hard to see. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. See that difference? The white messes with the camera. We're gonna start right here with piece number one. Piece number one. I still have my paper backings on with all the numbers. Oh, don't even tell me. No. I did. I traced the wrong sides. <laughs> I told y'all I've had a week. No, don't tell me. I did, too. Watch this. I traced the right side up and not the mirror image. See that? All of my pieces are backwards. Well, I, uh, okay, so the cool thing is we only have 12 pieces to do. Y'all give me a second. Do you have anything else to do today? <laughs> oh, you got your labels. I'm so glad. Yay. One thing for sure, y'all, I've always said, I would never have one video where everything is just so perfect and perfectly done. If you have somewhere else to go today, come back on the replay if you want to see this with the pieces on, because it's going to take me a hot minute. Good glory. I need the mirror image. Yes, I traced from the right side up. <laughs> Why did I do that? Okay, so let me transfer these numbers. Oh, I already did. If I did that, how did I do it wrong? I'm 
I'm going to tell you, I've had a week. So, you ever hear the expression, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? I always get nervous when my phone says, oh, an update is available. Because one time I updated my phone, and then all of a sudden my, fo my phone started acting funny. It didn't act funny before I updated, and all of a sudden it acts funny with the update. So I get really nervous anytime my computer says, oh, an update is available. Uh, any of my software programs that I use, I use Inkscape, I use GIMP, I use OBS. Anytime they say, oh, an update is available, I'm like, remind me later. <laughs> I don't really want to do the update. Uh, so I use Quilt Imagine on my computer or on my tablet for my long arm. And I've been putting off an update on that for about two years now. Let's see, I did one, two, three, four, about two years. Sure enough, I upgraded my software last week to the gold and I updated my software at the same time let me just say <laughs> I wish I hadn't have done that I was perfectly happy in version 4 but uh, yeah there we go I I don't like doing updates. Anyway, so uh, I've been dealing with that. That was part of my week. Dealing with an update. Uh, and then trying to knock out piecing these uh, blocks for my quilt tops. That part just, everything else seemed to go pretty quick, but the actual sewing the blocks together seemed to take forever. And it just didn't seem like I was ever going to get done. Well, last night we zoomed on the creative crew, and I did. I got the last 10 blocks done, so now I can start actually sewing together the tops. So I went to bed feeling really good, <laughs> like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. You ever feel like that when you get to a point in a project when you're just like, okay, I can breathe now. And the piece number 11. Y'all, I had really taken my time and cut out all of these pieces so perfectly too. So perfectly. All right, scissors. <laughs> Y'all can just hang out with me uh, while I try to quickly catch up. And I had everything done and all prepared and everything, too. I was like, today's going to be a short life. Holy cow. Wrong. I don't really want that much. There we go. I'm just going to quickly separate these, y'all. We covered all of this in week one. Like, if this is your first time ever working with raw edge applique or heat and bond for raw edge applique, I really slowed down in the process in week number one. So... If you missed that, you might want to go catch it. Because I'm going to quickly go through this. <laughs> quickly. 
And then, so I was setting up, I was like, so relaxed today, setting up, because all this work had been done. And I was so prepared, right? And I had all my pieces in that little bowl right there. And about 10 minutes before the live, I was getting everything situated and I knocked the bowl over on the floor. And I was trying to find all 12 pieces and the little tiny piece number 11 was hidden underneath my rolling cart. And I was like, I can't find piece number 11. <laughs> that should have been a sign. Check your pieces, Lisa. That should have been a sign. Let's see. I know that I used a lot of these colors. So. This is probably not the best iron. I like using my big iron for this part, but we're going to do it. Dari, when you scan the, uh, because you're putting heat and bond light on the back side of your fabric and then putting it on your mat, when you scan the pattern, you should scan right side up. And uh, because I, well, okay, so what I like to do is put heat and bond light on the back of my fabric. And then when I put the fabric on the mat, I put it with the heat and bond facing down on the mat. And the pretty side of the fabric is facing up. That's how I do it with my mat, okay? So if that's what you're doing, you'll want to scan the right side up version of the pattern, not the mirror. If you're tracing by hand, like I'm having to do again, you want to trace the mirror image. Where I messed up is I traced the right side up. <laughs> of course I did. I'm just quickly, you might not even see it right in the camera. Sheila said, someone needs to see this. What does someone need to see? What did I miss? This fabric is so pretty. I'm going to do... Where's piece number 10? I'm going to do two pieces with this fabric. <laughs> I think this is the prettiest fabric. Oh, you doing that by hand? Oh, I guess so. Well, I guess, you know, what it does show is that in about an hour's time, you can knock out the pieces, right? So if you're like, I just have too many projects going on and not enough time. Each week, we're breaking down the pieces. You might have... Uh, like 10 to 15 pieces each week, 16 or 17, I don't know. But in general, it really shouldn't take an extreme large amount of time if you wanted to follow along. I'm going to tell you. Uh, my daughter knows that, uh, well, actually, all my kids know. They always get me Pioneer stuff for my birthday, Mother's Day, Christmas. <laughs> uh, so for my birthday, Bailey and Austin gave me a sewing kit from Pioneer Woman. It was so dang cute. It came in a little zipper pouch, and uh, it had a pin cushion, some pins, a seam guide, a needle threader, needles, 
really cute, right? It had these scissors. Let me just tell you, these scissors are nice. They cut so nice and clean. And they're so pretty. Cutting, cutting, cutting. I wish I had more to tell you, like stories or something, but that's all I've got. <laughs> Let's see. Where's piece number seven? Have I already done it? This dark fabric is going to go right up in that corner. Let's use that one for this. I would tell you, these fabric scraps came from my commissions that I'm working on. <laughs> I know you can't really see up behind me on the board. Uh, so I'm doing four quilts for a client. Each quilt has 20 12 and a half by 12 and a half photos. And then those photos are set in a square and each of the four quilts have a different color theme, right? So one quilt is all blues. One quilt is all turquoises. One quilt was all purples. And the other quilt was green and yellow like John Deere colors, right? So when I was cutting out all the pieces for those blocks, this is pretty too. Let's do... Three and 12 with this blue. When I was cutting out all the pieces, this is what's left over. I was like, this would be pretty in the hummingbird quilt. Alberta, thank you so much. I do mess up quite a bit. <laughs> But it is real and it's honest and uh, I think if I had one video where everything was perfect, I said everything right, everything went smoothly, y'all would think that uh, it wasn't me anymore. <laughs> like what happened to the real Lisa? Where did she go? We're getting there, y'all. The mirror image is uh, not for the freezer paper. The mirror image is for fusible. The right side up Template is for, right side up, is for freezer paper. Because you fuse the freezer paper to the pretty side of the fabric, right? Look at this. That's pretty too. Let's do this big piece with this one. If you use freezer paper, you use... Yep, Miss Dari, you use the right side up version for freezer paper because you put that template on the pretty side of the fabric, the right side up. Uh, if you're using a fusible, you use the mirror image. It's so easy to get them confused. <laughs> I mean, look at me. <laughs> I certainly traced the wrong side. I can tell you why I did it though. I know exactly why, because I was playing around with my scan and cut. And I had the right side templates when I was scanning them to see how easy it would be to have the scan and cut cut out these pieces. And I just took that right side up and I just traced them. But that was wrong. It was not right. 
Let's see. Eleven and five. Eleven and five. Those two I'm going to do with that pretty little floral right there. We're almost caught up. <laughs> For hand cutting your pieces, and you're using a fusible, the mirror side. All right, we're getting close to being back. Y'all are so sweet. <laughs> I love y'all too, I really do. I really do. I'm going to tell you, I've come to really look forward to the lives. I'm not going to lie. When I first started doing lives, I didn't look forward to them. I wanted to do them, but they made me so darn uh, nervous that I didn't wake up excited and looking forward to doing the lives. Now that I've had some practice, I do. And I look forward to hanging out with everybody. All right, these are the last two pieces and then we're caught up. This number, uh, piece number 11 is a tiny little piece, but it does fill in some blue in that sky area. So where small little slivers from last week, you could have probably left out Piece number 11 is uh, kind of important, even if it's tiny and small. All right. <laughs> Let's start over. Let me bring this one back. Maybe it's a good thing I messed up because today was going to be so short. You're going to see once we start fusing these pieces in that it's going to go by so fast. And we would have been done with the live in about 10 minutes. So we got to hang out longer today. Catherine, the freezer paper has its advantages, right? It's a much more cost-effective way to do the raw edge applique, right? But I really feel like um, the fusible, especially for a project where we're extending this out for nine weeks, <laughs> this piece is gonna get put up on the wall, taken down, put up, taken down, folded up, opened up, traced on. The, the fusible really does a good job of securing all of the raw edges where the freezer paper method and you're just using a glue. Uh, sometimes the edges could start to fray if you're handling it a lot. Uh, I certainly love freezer paper for doing it, but I think for a longer version project where we're going to be messing with this off and on for several weeks, that's the reason I went with the heat and bond just to give it a little bit more sturdiness in all of the handling. All right, we're going back. Now you see, <laughs> that's right. You would not know the devastating feeling I had when I first put that piece down and saw that it was wrong. I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming because I traced quickly, y'all. And I probably did not trace it very accurately. I was going quick. A 
There we go. All right, we're bonding down, piece number one. All right, we're moving on to piece number two. Piece number two goes just like that. Let's see if I need to do any trimming. I am, I'm gonna trim it up a little bit. When I trace qu quickly, y'all, my pieces were so perfectly cut before. But that's all right. That's a really dark blue, isn't it? All right. Refusing that one in there. Will Wonder Under 805 work? I have not used it. I don't see why not. Uh, does it have a paper backing or is it just a, a, a little sheet that uh, if it has a backing on it that you can trace on, it should work. Ooh, I cut that whole piece off. <laughs> piece number three. Number three. Wow, I really traced my pieces all kinds of wonkity this week. All kinds of wonkity. Where's my little pen? Here we go. Miss um, Stacy said you're having a hard time finding the pieces for this week. Um, if you're on the creative crew, I uploaded this file, uh, in the file section, I think last night I put it up there. So that might be an easy place for you to find it in the file section. I have quite a bit of a gap there. I'm going to have to figure out what to do with that. Piece number six. That one I actually cut pretty accurately. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, let's put in this piece number seven. This is a very dark blue. It almost looks black, doesn't it? It almost blends right in. All right, piece number eight. See how quickly the pieces do go in though? <laughs> so we would have been done pretty quick. Yes, I love that fabric, that is pretty. Nita said, are you gonna be stitching around each piece are using the small bias fabric tape. I won't be using any bias uh, fabric tape on this. Uh, and I haven't quite decided how I'm going to quilt this yet. We've got lots of raw edges, right? Uh, you're really going to have a couple options, right? And I haven't decided which one to do yet. We're going to put piece nine down. Uh, 
You could certainly stitch down all these pieces individually. For me, the fastest way to do that would be with my free motion foot. And because this quilt's only 20 inches by 20 inches, it's pretty easy to maneuver in the sewing machine, right? So I might put on my free motion foot and just go slightly inside each piece. Or I might find a tool or an organza and cover this whole thing and do some simple straight line quilting. That's an option. It would certainly reduce the difficulty level in getting this quilt quilted. Let's bring in piece number 12. Michelle, you have a lot of blue scraps. Yay. I'm going to tell you I bought the prettiest fabric the other day. It's gorgeous. It would have been awesome. I mean, I love the, the scrappiness of this. But that fabric, if I would have just cut all of my sky pieces from that one fabric, that would have been pretty too. All right, piece number 10. Wow, I traced that kind of wonkity. Here we go. <laughs> I can tell I was in a hurry when I traced. That's okay. No one's ever going to know. No one's ever going to see that. It wasn't exactly traced or cut perfectly. That little piece number 11 goes right there. If you didn't do piece number 11, there's going to be a big gap between the wing and your sky pieces. That's why I said this tiny little piece this time is a little important. It's going to fill in that gap in the background. And that's really all it needed, just a sliver of blue fabric right there. All right, we have piece number five. Ah, now I know what I did wrong, y'all. I covered up piece number four. That's why piece number two didn't fit right. That's all right. This live is just going to continue the week that I've had. But that's okay. All right, here's piece number four, and I'm going to show you where it was supposed to go. Right there. You know what? It still can. No one's going to see that either. I do want to shorten it up just a tiny little bit. Like that. And then I'm going to put it right over top and watch how I fix that. because I like a little, at least a little sliver of black in between my pieces, right? To keep that mosaic look. I'm gonna bring in a fabric marker. That's the beauty of doing an art quilt is that you can modify your pieces. See that? Now there's a black gap between those pieces. <laughs> And you can't even tell. Perfect. I do think I want to fix that right there. That's a little bit of a big gap, isn't it? So we're just going to add another piece right in there. And no one will know that that wasn't supposed to be like that either. See that? I'm not going to tell if y'all don't tell.
It's a broken mosaic. And it was supposed to be like that. At this point, I'm just going to go over everything really good with my little baby iron and just make sure all those edges are tacked down. She's still on. So that was all of the pieces for this week. I kind of do like how I went from blues into some teals, back into some blues. Let me show you that. That was not on purpose, but I kind of really like it. So I think I'll continue that color theme as we work down. See that? Some lighter blues. And then uh, I started last week using some of the teal fabrics left over from my quilt and uh, did the middle section and then trans transitioned into some darker blues on the right. And I kind of really like that. So I think I will keep that theme as we work in the sky coming down. So I'm not touching the wings yet. We still have the chin part of the bird, a couple of petals uh, that are just waiting. And we'll get to those as we move down. Y'all, I'm sorry I messed up. <laughs> but we got to hang out a little bit longer today. And uh, yes, I will try to do it right next week. I cannot make any promises. Don't you really love that fabric right there? I don't know why that is so uh, pretty to me this week. I made several quilt blocks using that fabric and I didn't think it was, I mean, I thought it was pretty, that's why I bought it. But today, for some reason, that fabric is really so pretty to me. <laughs> so there we are. That's week number three. Pretty easy week if you don't trace the wrong templates, right? Let me turn this off. There we go. Pretty easy week. Next week, we're going to be working down. Let's take a look at that before we close out for today. Next week, ooh, we have a lot of pieces next week. This, this week, easy is... Uh, <laughs> It's probably like a consolation prize because next week we've got quite a few pieces going on. We'll be finishing up a good portion of my yellow flower, whatever color you're using. We're going to be doing several petals on that. We'll be doing some stems. Uh, we'll be starting to add the base of this leaf and we've got lots of sky area that we'll be doing next week. Yeah, so uh, if you're undecided on your color choices, you can grab some colored pencils, crayons, markers. You can color this to give yourself a little map. And uh, I think for me that that's really made it easy when I go to grab my scraps, what colors to pull out to work from. I have my wings colored green. That should be pretty. So that's what we're doing next week. We're working right in the middle, right underneath this yellow flower here. Uh, nope, we're still not completing these two petals here. That'll be the week after. Y'all, uh, I just want to thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today and dealing with my shenanigans. <laughs> and uh, I certainly look forward to seeing your pictures of your progress over on the Creative Crew. Uh, I wish I could share pictures of my quilt commissions because they're turning out so lovely, but I cannot share those pictures with you uh, because of the photos used in the quilt. I wish that, uh, I could have shared that progress with you. I really feel like there was so many teaching opportunities with these four quilts 
And uh, so I've started making a list of things I can go back with my own photos and teach you. Uh, so, yeah, I've started a list. Daria, I just want to say bye, husband. It's been great having you hang out with us. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, this is a really good little iron. The only drawdown is it takes a while for it to heat up. That's the only drawdown. It has four uh, heating settings. I always put it on four because I'm like full blast all the time. And it does take a good little minute for it to heat up. But it, it, it gets hot. And this is really good for turned edge applique. I don't do it a lot. But when I do, I use my Dritz Mini Iron. <laughs> I'm a goof. I know I'm going to mess up your name, Nanya. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong, but you're so right. Yes. No mistakes in art. I think this quilt with the hummingbirds would be a beautiful tribute to his mom. That would be amazing. Uh, Dari, I know you have been super busy and you've got all these projects that you've got going on that you're trying to finish up. Uh, but once you tackle that and you get some of that weight lifted off your chest, I do hope that you make time to do something fun uh, for yourself. Valerie, you're all caught up on the tracing. That's awesome. Daphne, yeah, you get started. You're gonna have fun. Even if you even if you trace the wrong templates and you have to cut out new pieces, it's still fun. <laughs> okay, everybody. I think I'm gonna go eat some lunch and then start sewing together a quilt top. That's what I'm going to do. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, stay safe, everybody. If the weather's nice, I hope you get out for a little bit. Get some sunshine if you can. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures and your updates, even if it's not this quilt. If you're working on something different, we want to see over on the Creative Crew. If you haven't joined the Creative Crew, there's a link down in the description box. We have an awesome moderator, Miss Maureen. Uh, make sure you answer the two security questions when you join in. We would love to meet you. We do Zooms sometimes. We had a great night last night. Okay, everybody. Toodaloos. I'm going to go eat some lunch and start sewing, sewing, sewing like a, <laughs> like a, like a little factory here in my studio. It's just going to be chain piece and chain piece and chain piece in, and I'm going to knock out at least one quilt top today. Bye, everybody. Toodaloos.